after some personal struggles, I started to learn, I started to be on this like spiritual quest. Hey, it's Heather Chauvin, wife, mother of three boys, former social worker, breadwinner, recovering hustler, and stage four cancer survivor. I'm not a fan of that term, by the way. Beyond all of these titles and labels, I'm a human being, just like you, attempting to navigate it all while feeling good. My goal on this podcast is to show you that you can live an energized, sustainable life, both at home and in your work. It doesn't matter if you stay at home full time, if you work from home, you're a CEO, a a successful business owner, or trying to find some inspiration. On this show, I attempt to keep it real with stories, interviews, and random thoughts. This is not a business or career podcast, and it's not a parenting podcast. It's both and so much more. You will laugh. You may even cry. And you may even get a little frustrated with the truth you've been hiding from yourself. I believe all human behavior is a language, whether it's through your child's behavior, your health, or a relationship. And when we learn to listen instead of react, we begin to understand what it truly means to feel alive and in control. It's time to put your big girl pants on and find your brave. Let's go. Personally, not a fan of the saying, everything happens for a reason. Although I do believe there is reason and meaning in everything. It doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing in the world. When we can attach meaning to what is happening to us in our life, we can therefore say, I get why this happened. Ladies, I'm so excited to share today's podcast with you. It's an interview that I did with Kristen Swanson. And Kristen is a client, a friend, a colleague, and just an overall amazing human being. And she shares her story about her own cancer journey, but how she found meaning in her life, something that she calls graceful productivity. And you and I both know that we get full Our lives get busy and we have lots of responsibility. So how do we find those periods of grace in our lives? How do we find those moments when we can choose to think something differently? So I'm really excited to share with you today, Kristen Swanson. Go check her out. She's on Instagram under Kristen Swanson or her website, KristenSwansonConsulting.com. Hello, Kristen. Hello. I'm so excited for this conversation. Good, me too. It's been a while since we've chatted. I know. How many years ago? So you came into my life. Well, we started working together. I don't know how long ago. I just, Um, I know. Uh, January of 2017. So like 18 so like coming out, that would be three years or is that yeah. two full years? Two full years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. A lot can happen in two years. I know. It's true. It has. So I wanted to talk to you about, um, well, the funny thing is, is I'm like, I just wanted to talk to you and to interview you, but I didn't really know why. And I think that is the whole, ooh, and it's one eleven my time. I just looked oh. up. But I think that's the whole point of this conversation is the knowing and logically we don't know why, but our body and our soul are telling us what we need to do. So Mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about like maybe your personal journey, your professional journey and kind of how you got to where you are today and introduce the listeners to who you are and what you're up to. Okay. So my personal and professional journey. So I'm Kristen Swanson. I am a coach and consultant and I help people execute their visions with ease. And I kind of have come, it's been a long journey actually to that point. And you're a huge part of that. And so personally, I have just been, um, I've, I'm always been like a planner, a 
project manager, strategy execution expert, like in my corporate jobs, it was all about project management and all about helping people execute their visions, but really in kind of like a linear, logical project manager type way. And that's just me and who I've always been. And then after some personal struggles, I started to learn, I started to be on this like spiritual quest. So my mom passed away of a rare form of dementia called frontal temporal dementia at a young age. And I was in my mid twenties when she was diagnosed and that like just rocked my world. I mean, I was really close with my mom. I had the best relationship with her. Like if I think about mother daughter relationships, I mean, I can't really think of another one that is as good as ours was. And so it just rocked my world. And I slowly lost her because it was a dementia, right? So slowly lost like her cognitive abilities. And that was so hard. So that put me on a serious spiritual quest because I was like, okay, where is she? I don't understand what I believe. Where is she now? Where is she going to be when she dies? Like all that. So I just became um, your typical, like we always talk about like a self-help junkie. I was completely (laughs) immersed in like the personal development, every single book constantly. And um, so that was just, it was almost like what I've heard you say before is like spiritual entertainment. Like I was sort of doing it as just like reading it, learning it, learning about meditating, but not meditating, learning about all of these, you know, health and nutrition and all of this stuff, but not actually implementing it. So, and then, um, so fast forward until four years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I'm a four year cancer survivor and that again, rocked my world. And that is when I definitely learned to follow my intuition and about surrendering and allowing and where I kind of, well, okay. So now I'm going to, I'm going to fast forward a little bit more to meeting you because you are it, it, the point where I met you, it's like when I, I'm just going to tell the whole story about like how I found your podcast and until I hired you. Does that work? Okay, go for it. <laughs> okay. So I was driving in my car, just like picking up my kids. I can even picture where I was when I was just like scrolling podcasts, just like looking, I just opened the podcast thing. And I feel like the mom is in control black logo, like was popping out at me. And I just clicked on it. Like it was old but, logo, my old logo. Oh, okay. Yes. Old logo <laughs> popped out at me. Like I, I just, I, I don't know. It's weird. Like when I look back, I just, I can remember just feeling a pull. So we're talking about these like nudges, you know, these, like what I think is like your intuition, creativity, whatever the universe, I felt a pull to listen and I listened to your podcast and I loved it. And then I just like binge listened, which by the way, I feel like that's everyone's story. Like everybody I talk to that works with you, it's like, that's where they start. And they were, they were called to you in some way and then they binge listen. So anyway, then I was just loving your podcast. And I would remember standing in the kitchen talking to my husband about it and about you. And he was like, well, what's her story? You know, what does she do? What's her story? And I, I was like, I don't know. Good question. And I pulled up your website and read your bio. And it was just like, I just, I just felt this like knowing, like I need to work with this woman because you were a cancer survivor. I mean, mainly because you were a cancer survivor, but also all the other things that you said, it was just like, okay, I have to work with her. And then when I filled out the application, so all it was, was filling out the application. I started to get super clear while I filled out the application. Like I didn't know why I wanted to work with you, but when I filled out the application, it became clear that it was because I want to write a book. And even so, and that was like my one thing at the time that I really wanted to work on. I've done like so many more things since working with you, but that was my one thing then. And, and I had, at that night when I went to bed in the middle of the night at like 4 a.m., the book content started coming to me. And like, I started to realize that what my thing was, was this whole concept of graceful productivity and taking all of that like linear project management side that I've talked about helping people execute their vision and merging it with the spiritual side and the more graceful, allowing, surrendering. And that that was my topic that I wanted to write about. And I had no idea. And so to me, that is just like magic that, I mean, I didn't even met you and all of a sudden this is energetically happening. So I think that's amazing. So then, okay. So then so many things since I have worked with you, but my biggest one probably being that I quit my corporate job and I'm doing this coaching and consulting 100% of the time. 
Yeah. And that was, so I kind of, the book, the book topic and then having like a platform on social media then turned into, okay, I'm going to do coaching and consulting on this topic. And that is really when I started to work with people and actually start to teach them this whole concept of executing with ease. Mm -hmm. And then, um, here I am today. I love this. So this is one of those typically when I have conversations with people, I'm like, okay, this is what I want to talk about. And even when you and I, we've met in person two times. Yeah. Okay. You've, yeah, you've come to my, a few of my retreats. retreats. And every time I'm like, I feel like we were friends in another life or something like this knowing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, Kristen, we just need to have a conversation. We'll see what comes out of our mouths and whatever people need to hear, they will hear. But I know that you and I are not alone in this and we've talked about this before and I'm, you know, whenever this is going out, I don't know exactly when this conversation is going to go on the podcast, but oftentimes we see ourselves as women or we're experiencing ourselves in a culture or environment that is not supporting us trusting ourselves. And it's the holiday season when this is being recorded. So typically you're hanging out with people that you wouldn't normally hang out with. And I'm experiencing this self myself where people are like, Oh, Heather, you're the weirdo. You're the crazy one. Like, Oh, there she goes again. And going from who I used to be, which was like severely depressed, chronically fatigued, sick, overwhelmed, culturally appropriate, right? Culturally acceptable to be as a mother and a woman and a wife and uh, someone who works and all of these things. But the more you listen to that pull, the more you go, what do I want to do? Like, what clothes do I want to wear? Where do I want a vacation? Do I want to have a girl's weekend with these girls or do I want to do something else? Or, you know, they're suggesting this type of event and I want to do this type of event. Like the more you ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? And start to insert those needs in your life and your environment and all of that. Everything changes around you. So I'm curious your perspective on how integrating more of you has allowed the pull, we can call it the pull, the intuition, whatever we want to call it, to become, I don't want to say louder and stronger, but it's kind of like any muscle, right? If you're working it out. So maybe someone who's like listening to this going, I have no idea what they're talking about. Right. Like, how can you explain that to someone listening? That's like, I know I have it. I've just never, um, I've never tapped into it before. I've always followed what everyone else told me to do. What do you suggest yeah. there? Yeah. So I think that's so common. And I hear a lot of people say that, that they don't even know what they want. And, and I would say what works for me is to like, just little in implementing little steps at a time. Like the first one that comes to mind is my morning routine and making the space for that every day. It started out very small. Now it's a lot longer and more in depth and now includes meditation and journaling and didn't always before though. So just getting up like five or 10 minutes earlier before the kids, like whatever it is that um, you're craving. So I was craving that. So I was craving the, the, peace and quiet and like inner calm. Maybe you're craving something else, but I think we have to listen to that. And if you don't hear anything and it's like, what are you talking about? Like you said, I think just like getting out in nature or going for a walk or just like inserting little things into your day where you can have the space to hear the pull. Because I believe that we all have those inklings and nudges and those breadcrumbs that you follow. I believe everybody has them, but not everybody has the, is like gets quiet enough to hear them. And I don't, Ooh, I mean, that's good. Yeah, everyone yeah. has them, but I don't, yeah. not everyone yeah gets quiet yeah. enough to hear them. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I say that and then I want to say, but you know, you don't have to meditate because I think a lot of people think I mean meditate when you, when you hear me say that, I don't think maybe that is the only answer. I think going for a walk or going for a run or whatever the, the, 
thing is that maybe that thing that you miss doing, like I often think about, for some reason, there's something about like, if you think about like your six or seven year old self and like what you love to do, like maybe it was painting or maybe for me it was dancing. And now I go to this like dance fitness class and I just feel so good. It's so, so sometimes it's something that you've lost touch with. So I just say, try different things too, because, um, you never know when you're going to start to hear that pull. And then when you do, you have to act. I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, we can talk about hearing it and then we can also talk about acting on it. And, and that's scary and hard. And so that's a whole nother topic. But, um, but yeah, I would just say like, start small and just kind of like follow what you would, you know, miss doing maybe. Yeah. I think that's really important. I've been watching people, actually, I've been observing my children more, um, because of that. Yeah. So watching, watching them, like, what are they into, right? Like, what are they really experiencing right now? Because almost like taking note of that so that in the future when they're like, I don't know what I want to do. Right. Because too often we're like, I don't know what I want to do. We're looking outside of ourselves. Well, I could do this, what this person's doing, or I could do that. It's coming back to ourselves. Um, And the more and more I ask myself, what does this look like and mean to you? And how does it want to be expressed out in the world from you? um, I'm tapping into things that I did not tap into, into my childhood. And it's really interesting because that's where alignment and the ease comes in. So I'm curious now that you've had this, um, well, when you got the clarity on graceful productivity, I'm sure you hear this a lot in your work of, I don't have time or this needs to be hard. Um, So what are you noticing are some of the big blocks and sticking points for people when it comes to creating graceful productivity. And also I know that we teach what we need to learn. So I'm sure there's blocks that you have as well. Yes. Yes. I absolutely believe that you teach what you need to learn. And so it's like something I've had to teach myself and have to continue to teach myself. So that's the biggest complaint. Like I know what I want to be doing, but I just don't have the time. And I think, and this is a lot of what you taught me is that it's all resistance. Like you do to have the time. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be, a, so I really help people with, okay, you know, they kind of talk to me about their vision and what big change they want to make in their life or their business. And I it just like the project manager in me, just like the steps just start to break down in terms of like what you would do. And so I help people w- break them down really small. So you do too have time. You have time to like, yes, maybe you can't start your podcast tomorrow and record a podcast tomorrow, but you could tomorrow just do a little bit of research on starting a podcast or do a mind map of your first podcast or whatever it is. Like I'm always breaking things down into tiny, tiny chunks and then making the space, having them make the space on the calendar and honor that. And then it's like all the resistance comes up and there's all these reasons why they can't do it. And it, that's just the fear, false evidence appearing real. So it's not even that the work So what I'm hearing you say, the symptom, presenting symptom is, I don't have enough time. Yeah, exactly. But the core is I'm resisting honoring the space that I've created. And so in that moment of resistance, so let's talk about resistance because it shows up in very unique ways. I find resistance to be, okay, what's that? Well, Stephen Pressfield, the war of art, Mm -hmm. right? The War of Art. Um, I always get that and the Art of War mixed up. So it's okay, the, yeah. the War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. He talks about resistance. And, you know, looking back on my life, I'm like, wow, I've pretty much resisted <laughs> most of my life, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and I see this in children when people say, why won't my child do this? Or, you know, I know my child has more potential. And I'm like, they're experiencing resistance just like you. We don't want to be seen to who our full potential because then we're going to be judged, right? Or people are going to be like, oh, must be nice. Or, oh, you're the smarty pants or you're this. So we hide. We hide from our light. So as adults, when you're really like, I've had enough of this bullshit, like I'm going to be me fully self-expressed, you go out into the world and the second you do, 
boom, there's resistance. So mine has manifested through uh, literally my brain saying, I don't know how to do this. Mm-hmm. And I've discovered, great. What's the opposite of that? I do know how to do this. So I'll just sit with my journal and I'm like, I do know how to do this. Or how can I? You know, uh, Marie Forleo talks about everything is figure outable, right? right? So how can I? How can I? How does resistance show up for you in your life? And how have you kind of co-created a relationship with it to kind of know that it's trying to pull its tricks on you, but you're like, no, no, I got this. Okay, so... It shows up as like everything that I have to do that is not the thing that I say I'm going to do, right? Like there's all, and it's so real. It's like all of a sudden I'm going to sit down to record a Facebook live or whatever it is. All of a sudden, like my husband wants to go out to lunch with me and there's like the kids call and you know, you got to go pick them up. I mean, it's like, this is real stuff happening. I got to go do this. It's so easy to be like, um, it's not even resistance. That's just my life, you know, other things popping up, but I believe it really is resistance. So, I mean, turn your phone ringer off, do whatever you need to do, turn off all your alerts. Um, I think the biggest thing though, that I do to overcome resistance and fear is what you taught me, which is energy management. So like noticing when I have those moments and also like proactively planning for them. So like, um, if I know that I have something that I'm going to be resisting that day, it's on my calendar and I'm definitely do your whole energetic time management. So I'm like planning on Sunday, my whole week. And there's a couple of things in there that I, that are on the calendar that I'm resisting. So I will insert before those things, like what I call energy fuel to make sure that I'm like fueled up and not depleted going in and not going to be kind of subject to that resistance. So going to one of those like dance fitness, like I said, or going on a walk, I have to like get out into nature and doing those kinds of things where you're like proactively managing your energy. What if I told you there was a no bullshit way to feel good while going after the life that you want? And I'm not talking about some templated how to live your best life. I'm talking about you knowing exactly what you want and also having the courage to go after it. In my experience working with women in the last decade and also doing the deep soul searching myself, not only have I found kind of the tools and strategies, but I have the experience to know how people are getting in their way from feeling alive. We all want freedom. It's part of the human experience to want freedom, but we get stuck in our head and ego and expectations of others and not understanding how to manage our fear and the guilt that comes up. So if you are ready to rock 2020, no more excuses, no more letting other people's expectations of you hold you back. You are ready to jump all in blindfolded feet first, then come to alive. And the reason why I'm letting you know this is because when you purchase your ticket, before December 24th. So you literally only have a few more days to get the additional bonus. I'm gifting you a $1,500 bonus. We're going to spend two hours together online. So it doesn't matter where you are. This is virtual. I don't offer this to anybody outside of my coaching programs. Not only am I going to teach you my energetic time management strategy, we are going to do some hot seat coaching and get you ready for 2020. So if you're wondering, well, how do I create the space? I'm literally going to show you how. This isn't a program or conference for how to start a business. This is how to lead the life that you feel called to lead. When you say yes to that calling, that ache inside of you, That is when magical shit starts to happen. So head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash alive and buy your ticket today. I look forward to hugging you in person in Detroit on February 6th. See you there. 
So in that moment, because I agree with you, you're like, okay, I have this Facebook live that is on my calendar. I'm doing this for my business or, you know, before you even started your business, just to like make yourself uncomfortable and get yourself out there. Right. And then it's like, oh, the kids need to be picked up. Or like you said, your husband wants to go out for lunch. I mean, it would take you five to 10 minutes to do the actual live. So honoring your action, which is yes, actually we can go out for lunch or yes, kids, I could come pick you up, but I will leave in 10 minutes after this is done. In that moment, I mean, that's a habit formation too, would you say? Because a lot of people just drop everything and go, oh my gosh, I have to, I have to do this. So what have, do you have any, I hate the term, tricks or tips, but, um, have you forced yourself over time? Like how have you worked through that part? Well, okay. So two things come to mind. One is the whole, it's like boundary setting, right? Like I had to, I feel like I'm working up against like generations of us just jumping when somebody says I need you. Right. So we have to really train ourselves to have those boundaries say, you know, I got, I need to do this first. I'm putting this first. So that, and then, and then in the actual moment, I have things like, I mean, deep breathing and like EFT tapping, like doing like little, those are kind of like little tips to actually get through the 10 minutes (laughs) to do the thing and get it get it done. And you just feel so much better on the other side of it. I mean, that's the huge part is like, once you're done, you feel so much better. Then you go do the, go out to lunch with your husband or pick up your kids and you are so much more you and so much more attractive to be around. I want to say, right? Like, because you're honoring yourself. And I just think there's like magic in that. And to me, that is the definition of being alive. When you do the energetic time management And you put your needs on the calendar. So example, why would a Facebook Live have anything to do with feeling alive in your life? Well, maybe you really feel called to get this message out into the world. And doing a Facebook Live might scare the shit out of you. But on the other side, you're incredibly proud of yourself and going like, oh my gosh, like I'm doing it, right? Like you have that excited, nervous, vomit, shit your pants vibe, and then you just do it. And the consistency of that, it's like, for me, it just fills the cup. It fuels it up. Um, What did you call it? Energy fuel? No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, energy fuel. I yeah. love it. I think that's amazing. Yeah. And so and that just it's like a compound effect on that too. Like yes. the more you do those little tiny things that you're shitting your pants over, it's like the compound effect and just builds momentum. Yeah. It's so yeah. cool. I podcast about this a few days ago, but um I've been getting way better with, I want to go to the gym early in the morning. Like that's just the thing that I want to do instead of, I know I could probably do it. I could do it in the middle of the day. I just don't want to. Right. So, um, to hold myself accountable, I told one of my gym buddies, like, I'm going to pick you up in the morning because I won't back out on you. I'll definitely back out on myself, but I won't back out on you. And that was like to hold me accountable. And so I went this morning at like 5.30. I don't even remember going, but it just, I already feel like I I won my day. And it's the things that you resist the most that for me, that I have found out, the things that you resist the most get you closer to what your soul is craving. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about the spiritual woo-woo side of all of this, the stuff that you know, we can't, we can read in a book. Um, I remember when I was getting into personal development, learning about Abraham Hicks. So some, some people might go, what is she talking about? So just Google Abraham Hicks or the law of attraction. Um, I was listening to it, but I didn't get it. So how, you know, and I'll hear this from people that work with me, oh my gosh, like I'm getting it. Like I've surrendered or I'm open, but how do you explain the spiritual journey? It has nothing to do with religion. It has, you know, you can have your own beliefs. We have women from all walks of life that come through um, coaching and there's spiritual is like non-denominational, right? It's like a connection that we're all craving. So how do you even explain that to someone who's like, tell me this feeling that you have. Like, how do you, you get what I'm trying to ask you, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it's hard to explain. So I don't know exactly how I explain it besides it's this, um, I mean, I like to call it grace because I feel like it's like moving through you. And the more you listen to those like inklings and what your soul's whispers are is kind of the way I, and I I say whispers on purpose because I feel like the voice is even quieter for some reason. Like there's, so it's listening to those soul whispers and then acting on them. And then you just, you just see and eventually have a knowing that that is something like more powerful than us. I mean, it, it just, it's just a knowing, but I think it comes with time and, and experience in listening to the soul nudges and acting because then you kind of get the reality life acknowledgement that, oh, that was, you know, I'm glad I listened to that. Like I always, I know this is like a weird example, but I always think about like when you buy a house and have you ever like been so in love with a house and not gotten it and been devastated, right? But then like years later, you look back on that and you're like, I am so glad I didn't get that house. Why? Like I, we would be living in that town. I have no interest in that town. Like somebody knew somebody, like something, I don't believe it's somebody, something, like so much more all like powerful that we can even like put words around is at work here. And, and I can't make these decisions. I mean, so I think about my whole cancer decision, like my decision to have a double mastectomy. That was for me when I really learned like intuition at like what it really is, because I believed that like the doctors would tell me what to do, right? Like they're just going to, they're going to tell me my treatment plan. They'll tell me what to do. They'll tell me whether I have a lumpectomy or a single mastectomy or a double mastectomy. Well, they didn't, they don't, they tell you all the odds and they give you all the information and then they say, you decide. And that was so hard for me. And sort of when I had this whole, like, okay, I can't like project manage my way out of this one. Like this is when I kind of realized like I need to surrender. And I had read about surrender for years and I had no idea what that really meant. But in that moment, it was like, I am going to pray about it. I'm going to ask for guidance. And I remember my stepmom saying to me, you're going to just, I think you're just going to wake up one morning and you're just going to know. And I remember thinking, oh, well, that'd be nice. Yeah. Right. But then one morning I was writing in my journal and I just started like writing about like, what do I want my legacy with this cancer to be? What do I want my kids to remember? And I just got like absolutely 100% clear. Like I want my kids to remember that I had cancer and that's all I want them to remember. I'm doing a double mastectomy. And I told my husband that right when he woke up and he was like, whoa, whoa, like (laughs) you need to think about this a little bit more. Are you sure? And I was like, absolutely sure. I called my sister and it was the same thing. Like, whoa, you know, like big decision. Like why? Cause it was like really everybody at the stage it was and everything. They really thought that was like overboard, but I just, I just was clear. I just knew. And so I tell this story because that was this clarity moment that I had. And then the pathology validated it. So when I got the pathology back, it was like, yes, I, it was good that you didn't do a lumpectomy because now we looking at the pathology, it was like bigger than we thought we would have been having you go back to do a mastectomy. And actually we probably would have had you go back and do a double mastectomy because the MRI wasn't good detection for you. And it was just like, oh my God. I do. There is something that, you know, I did know. I somehow knew it. So it was following that intuition. And so I know it's like a huge like tangent, but that's kind of what I mean when I say there's like evidence in life that like validates it for you. Yeah. And I like how just that example, everyone outside of you is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. And Mm -hmm. that's what they call as contrast. Like they're, they're like, let's test this. It's a boundary as well. Like a boundary with your intuition, like your internal guidance system. You don't believe like you don't trust me or you're testing to see how much I trust myself right now. And I've had that opportunity many, many times in my life, not even through my health journey, but my business journey as well. Um, My husband definitely is supportive and has always trusted me, probably trusted me more than I trusted myself at the beginning. A lot of other people did not. 
And if you are embarking on anything outside of the norm, you will constantly be judged. You will const your bound the boundaries of how much you trust yourself will constantly be pushed. Of what are you doing? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Um, and then once you gain some, like you're saying, momentum and kind of evidence that you're headed in the right direction because it feels good and you're receiving back, right? So if you're starting a business and you're like, okay, yes, it's profitable, or you know, there is a little money coming in, um, or you said yes to, you know, a a health decision and it's improving your health. You're like, okay, I'm receiving more evidence that I'm headed in the right direction. Once you start getting that, you feel a little more grounded. And then once people start testing that trust, you're like, fuck off. I've made good decisions up to here. Like you don't have to keep pushing the envelope, like good for you. But now you're just projecting your fear. Right. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's their fear and it's also them trying to keep you safe. Yeah. And that's just going to happen. But then I th- love what you're saying because there's, it's, it's like evidence. So I kind of like to like keep an evidence journal, like just all of the evidence of these like spiritual nudges, like leading me in the right direction and, and helping me to manifest what I want in my life. Because the more you have that evidence, the more you believe it. And I think that's kind of helps with the doubt that creeps up. So let's talk about, I'm like, man, we could talk forever and ever, but I think this is going to be wildly beneficial to someone who is listening on this journey. Um, Can you think back to either that moment where the doctors were like, here's all the information, you make the decision. And were you ever angry or mad? Like, I want you to make the decision for me. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I was mad and like, I don't know, like you're so much more qualified to make this decision. What do you recommend? And I, I mean, I think I even asked the surgeon who I love, I loved my surgeon. I asked her like, what would you do if it were your sister or something like that? And she really wouldn't answer me. Like they don't answer. But if you think about it now, I'm so glad she didn't because she might've said the wrong thing and I'd be going in for another surgery. I mean, so yeah, I definitely got angry for sure. So thinking about like you can put this into so many scenarios. I've definitely had people mad at me before because the way that I coach is I trust that that person knows the answer. And this is the whole like collaboration versus codependency conversation. And there's a lot of codependency out there, whether it's in our relationships or whether we're hiring people to support us. And codependency, the second that it's gone, like the second that that person or relationship is not in your life anymore, meaning if you're paying for this relationship, mean like the second that person is out of your life, you're going to end up right back where you started. So I'm always telling people, this is a collaboration. Like I'm going to teach you the tools and the strategy. And you could say, I really don't know what to do, Heather. And then I'm going to challenge that thought. And then you can come back with your answer. And then I can give you feedback on it. But that's, that's where people are literally giving their power away thinking, I don't know I don't know the best way to support my child's behavior. I don't know the next right decision to make in my health. Should I be vegan? Should I be vegetarian? Should I be pescatarian? Should I dye my hair? Should I not dye my hair? Should my child go to this school or that school? Should I make this business decision or that business decision? At the core of it, when you feel really strong in who you are, like you can make quicker decisions that are in alignment. Um, you will probably, you, I don't know about you, but I have like, I don't believe in failure. Cause it's like, you just get back in line and you kind of right. course correct. Yeah. But, um, how has strengthening your intuition, learning that, how to do that. And then going through this process, um, changed your marriage and your parenting as well. Oh, okay. I was going to bring up my marriage. It's so funny that you say that because I, my biggest like block when I hired you was 
I needed to go ask my husband for permission. Right. And, and then I needed to ask you for permission on every single like business decision I was making. And you totally taught me to trust myself and make the, so, so what it's changed is like, instead of asking, which again, I think that was like generations that I'm breaking, right? Like I think my mom asked my dad and probably her mom. I mean, I think that's just the way it is. And I, I think it's so sad now, now seeing, I see people do this. It's like, it's, it is like giving your power away. It's like, what, well, what do you think? What, like, let's not go ask your husband. What do you, what do you think before you even ask him or before you even talk to him is a better way to put it let's, you know, talk about what you want. And then you go and you talk about what you taught me to do with my husband was to go and ask, not ask, talk about what I want to do. And here's why I want to do it. And how can we make it work together? And like you said, co-create. So it has definitely changed my marriage in that way. Like I, I now come with what I want and we have a conversation about it. And, and that wasn't ever like met with any kind of, he doesn't care. Like, I, I don't think it ever, I don't even know if he noticed it, but I think it, I think I am a happier person because I'm making decisions about the way I want to spend my life. And even like have a business, right? Like I will make business decisions. I, I think I used to ask even, yeah, with everything. So, and parenting, I don't know. That's a good question. How has it changed my parenting? Um, I think I am just more, it's really the whole like energy management thing that has changed my parenting, putting myself first, putting all of these things as priorities so that when I do show up as a parent, I am a lot more present and not yelling and just a better mom because I, I'm honoring who I want to be. And I think, like I said something before about that being attractive, that's weird to say about your kids, but it just makes you more like, don't you want to teach them that, right? Like to follow what they want and do what they want to be doing in their lives. I love this conversation. I've been so curious about, um, I'll get women messaging me all the time. Just definitely some come from this victimhood right? Like this place of victim of how can I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And, and not really willing to explore anything else, but that story. And it's, I don't think we all know that it is learnt helplessness that, you know, feeling like the world is just out to get you is a taught behavior. And somebody in your lineage taught this to you. And it could be, they don't have to be, you know, biologically connected to you. It could have been um, a caregiver that wasn't your mother or father that just taught you to give your power away to other people. But I'm telling you, you can own and do whatever you desire, but you will have to make some really uncomfortable decisions in order to get there. Yes. What is the most uncomfortable decision besides, you know, should I get both of my boobies chopped (laughs) off? Have you had to make in your life? Oh my gosh. Um, well, the one, the one that's so recent, I, I think was quitting my job. I mean, that was just so hard for me and like years in the making, like years, multiple years that I wanted to quit my job and just completely do my own coaching and consulting business. And I knew that I wanted to do that, but just taking that leap and trusting, I mean, absolutely having to trust. And we had just gone on the retreat where we did this, um, your retreat where we did the zip lining. And I just, when I had to, when I, when I gave my notice, I mean, I just, absolutely feel the same feelings in my body as I did because I'm completely afraid of heights. So I was one of the ones like in the back, really, really resisting the zip lining. And I have to like picture myself like holding onto that bar and just like going to the edge and just like letting, you know, letting my feet go and just like jumping. It felt like jumping off a cliff. And that's exactly the way it felt quitting my job because I wasn't exactly sure if, you know, what the revenue would be right away. And it's the exact same feelings in my body. That's why it's so weird. It's like physiologically or whatever, that is the same feelings. So 
it's weird that, you know, so I just had to tell myself, like, I got through that. I can get through the, these feelings. They're just feelings. They're going to pass. I mean, that's something else that I've really learned is from you is do, you know, doing these things that you're really resisting. It's like the fear is there, but it's, it's only temporary and it's just a feeling. And if you can breathe through it and like get yourself to the other side of it, it will pass. It's going to pass just like a wave. It will pass. I had a conversation with a friend last week and I said, Oh, I'm, I think in 2020, I'm going to run a full marathon. I've only done two halves. She's like, why do you do these things to yourself? <laughs> and she's like, you're not a runner, Heather. Like, and she's a childhood friend. She's like, you were never this person growing up. And I said, I love challenging myself. At first I did it from a need that I just needed to feel alive. I'm like, okay, Heather, like I needed to push through the resistance. So I would do things that scared the shit out of me constantly. And now when you do things physically that challenge you, it's like you can transfer that lesson mentally. Right. Right. So you're like, okay, same feeling. I'm just yeah. sitting here at my desk about to send an email. <laughs> Nobody's going to die. I'm not right. really on a ledge. Why am I fucking terrified? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Even though you can rearrange the budget, you know, you're like, yeah. okay, we'll make it work. Our, yeah. Yes, our lifestyle might have to change temporarily, but we're safe. We're safe. Right. And yeah. why am I terrified? And it's, yeah. I always say your, your, willingness, your willingness to get uncomfortable, like at to the degree that you're willing to get uncomfortable is a degree that you will grow and feel alive. Because if you are just like, nope, 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 then yeah. the universe is like, she ain't ready. I'm not going to send anything else her way that she really wants because anytime I send it to her, she just like throws it back at me. So I'm just going to move on to somebody else. She's a scared, you know, wounded cat. Right. So I'm just going to wait until she's not so snappy and warm and welcoming. But if she's not, I ain't, I ain't throwing her a bone. Right. Yeah. Awesome. I am so grateful for you. So look how much has changed in two years. Just imagine where you're going to be in a few more years from now. I know. I know. So what are you up to? Where can everyone find you? Okay. So you can find me on, um, so my website is kristenswansonconsulting.com and my Instagram is kristen underscore swanson underscore. And then I've got a Facebook page and you can find all of that on my website. And yeah, so what I'm up to, I'm doing the coaching and consulting. I'm really focusing on these execute with eight ease programs. So I have got an execute with ease group coaching program and one-on-one -on -one coaching program and just helping people who know what they want to be doing in their life and business. A lot of times it's business for me. It's like a lot of my clients are either launching or scaling a business, but you don't have the time to do it. So I'm helping people find the time and space to make those things happen. Amazing. Thank you for being you. And I'm so grateful that we Thank connected, you. that the universe brought us together. Yes. Thank you. According to a study published on Fast Company, conducted at the University of Kansas, women are burning out at an alarming rate, even before having children. And that number rises with the additional responsibility of raising a family. And the gap between ambition and putting themselves in a position for promotion isn't going anywhere. Why, you ask? The world needs more empowered mothers, women who are willing to unlearn everything that they've been taught, women who are courageous enough to feel good and not feel guilty for it. I am living proof that you can feel alive energized, peaceful, and put yourself on your own damn to-do list and make an even bigger impact in your children's lives and those around you. I want to show you how to think, how to act, how to behave so you can step into that version of you that has been screaming for your attention. And the best part is all you have to do is take the next step and invest two minutes of your time and book a complimentary call with someone on my team to see if my community and coaching is the right fit for your big 
vision. The relationships you desire, the money, time, and energy that you know deep down you are capable of creating. So head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash let's talk. That's Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N dot com forward slash let's talk. L-E-T-S-T-A-L-K. And take the next step in the right direction. You are here Because you were born to make a difference. Taking a stand for how you feel means you are taking a stand for how your children show up as adults. You've got this. Let's go. 